Today's video is really, really great for dogs who have intense prey drive. If they chase after squirrels, dogs, cats, all of that stuff, and you cannot call them away from it. There is one toy that is required for this video. So it is called a flirt pole. The link in that description will be below. And it, this is going to be stage one. So in stage one, we are going to need to be building all of our desire. If your dog doesn't have desire for something, that means that there's no reason to build control over something they don't care about in the first place. Especially when it comes to the squirrels, cats, etc. Your dog cares about those things, otherwise they wouldn't want to chase them. So we need to put the same emphasis and desire into this toy. So in the next clip, I have done this a few times here and there with my dog in my basement, but I've never done this outside. Outside, I see a completely different behavior than if I were to continue doing this inside. So I kind of wanted to take you guys along on this journey of me teaching my dog some self-control and learning to recall away from those distractions or at least listen to me in the face of distractions. So the next clip is just going to be me playing with a voiceover of everything that I'm doing in this video. So if you guys have additional questions, please drop them in the comments. I am more than happy to help you guys out. And enough rambling, let's get into the video. When it comes to the flirt pole there, it, think of it like a giant cat toy. For dogs basically you can see it has a toy at the end of this really long stick basically and what i'm doing with this stick is i am or this toy is i am following three rules and i'll put those rules on the screen and in the description below now those three rules are rule number one the toy must stay on the ground the, your dog is not going to be able to keep up with or keep the attraction of the toy if it is flinging around all over the place and just kind of <laughs> acting like a whip, basically. So we want the toy to be staying on the ground as much as possible. The second rule is that the toy must run in both directions. You can see with Ding, I've already done a couple of um, direction changes with her, and I'll continue doing it throughout the whole video. That is for a couple of reasons. Number one, the prey that your dog is chasing, whether that be a squirrel, a bunny, um, a bird, or other dogs, cats, you know, whatever is your dog's desired taste for prey, um, will not be predictable when it comes to running away from them. They're going to try to run in different directions, run at different speeds. They're going to try and climb things, etc., etc. So they're going to be unpredictable. Lastly, the third rule is that our um, is that if the dog has it in their mouth, then the toy must effectively try and get away. You can see in the in multiple parts of the video pretty much every time it is in my dog's mouth i am pulsing the toy so i am trying to rip that toy out of my dog's mouth what this does is again it acts like prey if there's a squirrel in your dog's mouth you bet that the squirrel is going to be trying to get away and number two if your dog is learning some type of formal retrieve or if they need an out or drop it command, this is going to start to build that in a fun way. So um, it's going to teach them to hold on to things even more. So if they are like, for example, Ding is going to be taught to um, bring your keys to you on command. I don't want Ding to drop those keys halfway to bringing them to me. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach her to hold on to things by pulsing that toy and I am going to, it, it's going to end up transferring to those keys for when she brings those keys to me. What you just saw there was that Ding does not have an out command, um, a verbal out command right now. So 
what we are, I am doing is I am bringing the toy close to me. I'm grabbing a hold of her with my collar grab and I am waiting until she lets go. When she lets go and we gain some type of control, then we continue playing the game. And I want to keep the dog moving as much as possible as well. It's not necessarily a rule, but we want that circular motion. And another point of it, the toy running in both directions is that it works both sides of our dog's body. All right, any questions? When it comes to the flirt pole and starting with the flirt pole, we really want to follow those three rules that I spoke about um, while I was playing the game. I'm going to refresh them here, make sure it's really ingrained in your brain. The first rule is that the toy stays on the ground as much as possible. We don't want to be flinging it up above our heads or we don't want our dogs jumping for it or anything like that. We want it on the ground, ideally close to our dog's nose. The second rule is that the toy runs in both directions. So that way we are, our, the toy is acting more and more like wild prey. And also when our dogs are running in circles around us, they are working one side of their body and really only one side of their body. So by using both or utilizing both directions, our dog will be working both sides of their body. Great for fitness. And the third rule is that when the toy is out or in your dog's mouth, you are going to try to be getting it out of their, uh, out of their mouth by pulsing the toy. And you are going to be doing this to tighten their grip on the toy and again, act as if the toy is prey. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. This is just stage one. We're going to be building in more and more control. And I'm going to be um, bringing you guys on Ding's journey with her learning through this as well. Drop your questions down below. Hope you guys have a great day and keep on training.